Welcome to this edition of Go Vote Omaha, presented by the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. I'm Kat Henning, Vice President of LWVGO and your host for today's program. Today we are talking to our friends from Nebraska Appleseed about the paid sick leave for Nebraskans ballot initiative. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse political candidates or parties. The League does, however, take positions on issues. Our purpose is to empower voters and defend democracy. Go Vote Omaha primarily focuses on policy issues, and as a result of our discussions, we hope you'll feel ready to make informed decisions at election time. Joining us today is Field Director of Nebraska Appleseed, Kate Madsen, and Community Advocate, Cindy Meyer. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Um, to get started, I'll just ask you both to um, tell me a little bit about yourselves and your connection to Nebraska Appleseed. Sure. Uh, I'm Kate Madsen, and I'm the field director at Nebraska Appleseed and the Nebraska Appleseed Action Fund. Um, I worked at Appleseed previously, actually, from like 2015 to 2018 as a community organizer, um, and I worked on the Medicaid expansion ballot initiative back then. Um, I then went to law school, uh, worked in private practice, and worked for a judge for a year, and I'm now back at Nebraska Appleseed. Um, I'm very excited to be doing work on paid sick leave. Yes, and I'm Cindy, I'm a volunteer. Um, I got involved with Nebraska Appleseed as a volunteer in November of 2021 um, through the Minimum Wage Initiative. Um, and I have just really enjoyed my time with Appleseed. I've learned a lot um, and it's been really great to connect with people about um, issues that are important to Nebraskans. Awesome. Well, thanks again so much for being here. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, so to get started, what is paid sick leave? Great question. Um, so right now, um, there is no law that requires employers to provide paid sick leave to employees. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that if an employee is sick, if their kid gets sick, um, if they have like an elderly parent who gets sick, they if they don't have paid sick leave through their employer, really have only two options. It's either go to work sick, uh, figure out childcare for their sick kid, or lose out on a paycheck because they are not paid for taking time off. Um, and so paid sick leave is a way for employees to be able to take care of themselves and their families um, and still uh, be able to earn a paycheck. And then uh, the particular policy that uh, this ballot initiative would cover also has um, protections that prevent employers from retaliating against people um, who take paid sick leave because some folks have paid sick leave mm. um, through their employers, but if they take it, um, they might get like docked points if there's a point system mm. or they might have the employer otherwise like punish them for taking advantage of the policy. Sure, which I'm sure makes people less likely to take advantage yes. of it when they need it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the specifics of what this policy would do in Nebraska if it passed? Yeah, so um, the policy is essentially an accrual model. So depending on the size of the business, employees would accrue five or seven days of paid sick leave. Um, if it's a business with fewer than 20 employees, they would accrue up to five days of paid sick leave a year. If it's in a, a business with 20 or more, it would mm -hmm. be up to seven days per year. Um, and so because it's that accrual model, it, it equals out to about for every 30 hours worked, they accrue about an hour of paid sick leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I have a job also, <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> benefits can like be a little confusing. Yeah. Can you tell me about the difference between paid sick leave and like paid time off or like regular sick leave or medical leave? Yeah, so paid sick leave is essentially like regular sick leave. It's just paid, like getting paid for it. Um, but paid time off can account, can include both paid sick time and paid vacation time. So if a, a company has a PTO, um, often what, it, what they'll tell employees is you can use this for either vacation or sick time. Mm. Um, this policy would kind of set the floor for those PTO plans as well. It would say those PTO plans, if a company has that, um, means that the company has to still offer that five or seven days minimum paid sick time uh, within that PTO plan. Um, and then 
you asked also about parental leave, is that right? Mm -hmm. So family leave or parental leave, maternity leave um, is specifically for like a, a, usually the birthing person or their partner mm -hmm. um, being able to take time off uh, when they have a, a child. Um, this policy is different from that and that it's not specific to like a, a baby being born or adopted. Sure. Um, but it, it could still be used if, if a, like an employee doesn't otherwise have parental leave. Um, this would be a way to at least get five to seven days of, of time at home with your baby yeah. too. So. Yeah. And you meant, remind me, so is mm -hmm. there any current requirement for paid sick leave in Nebraska? No. Mm -mm. Nothing at all? Nothing at all, yeah. Okay. So right now we've seen a lot of people, especially who work in like the service industry, uh, food service, retail, um, and construction. Um, our organization works a lot with folks who work in like meatpacking plants in rural areas, um, daycare workers. A lot of people in those positions are not earning any paid sick leave. Um, and so it's often people that are like interacting also with customers all the time, like taking care of our children, taking care of our parents, making our food, who are least likely to have paid sick time. Um, and so we also see this as like a public health concern. Yeah. Um, and I think, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was gonna say with that in mind, mm -hmm. the uh, public health concern, like it, for me, what motivated me about paid sick leave mm -hmm. is thinking about like, we just had the COVID pandemic where we clearly saw that somebody else's health can affect your health or your family's health, Absolutely. right? And so for myself, it just makes sense to um, make it okay, make it financially okay more than anything for Nebraskans to be able to stay home to take care of themselves or take care of their families mm -hmm. um, when they're unavailable, they're too ill to work versus just trying to you know their best to be as good as they can be and go to work when they're um, unwell and then spreading other things to other people so yeah yeah thank you for that thank you for that um can you tell me a little bit about how uh how paid this paid sick leave initiative like made its way to nebraska do you know anything about what how it got started here i can speak a little bit to it, but also, so Cindy volunteered with Nebraska Appleseed and our broader coalition on minimum wage ballot initiative work. And that's actually kind of where this arose from. Okay. It's a very similar coalition that's working on the issue. Um, we are a group of, of organizations who have worked with community members who are impacted by kind of quality job issues. Um, and minimum wage was an issue that we tackled a couple of years ago through a ballot initiative. Mm -hmm. um, and after doing that, we continue to hear kind of about like economic justice issues, quality job issues from folks, and paid sick leave was something that came up a lot. Um, and so the kind of same coalition of partners got together and were like, we should try to do something about this too mm -hmm. um, and get this on the ballot. And I really believe that paid sick leave is something that's universal to a lot of Nebraskans. Like even if you're not directly in the workforce, you're still affected by it. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a child and you're feeling unwell and your parents don't have paid sick leave mm -hmm. and they tell you to go to school because they can't miss work, like that affects you as well, even though you're not in technically in the mm -hmm. labor force. So I felt myself personally that paid sick leave was a very universal um, thing that would affect a lot, affects a lot of Nebraskans and that totally. a lot of Nebraskans would benefit from. Yeah, totally. There's so many social policies that like, that affect everybody in the family, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just the adults, it's, totally. it's, it's everybody from the little ones. Absolutely, on and, yeah. I, and I will say as, I've had some experience working in education mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as a pro educational profes professional, um, there were definitely times where I was like, why is this child at school? Yeah. They, mm -hmm. look, they don't feel good. They're mm -hmm. not ready to learn right now. Yeah. But understanding that they didn't have a choice, mm -hmm. their parents didn't have a choice because if they missed work, then that would create a uh, financial stress on their family, mm -hmm. which would then, you know, it it's becomes a domino effect for families in Nebraska. Totally. Of missing one day at work, and then you don't have enough to make uh, a payment to a certain bill, mm -hmm. and then that bill, maybe it's your electricity and it gets cut off. Mm -hmm. And that just, you know, it turns into like a snowball, really, 
Um, so if we can do something as simple, really, as paid sick leave for all Nebraskans, mm -hmm. um, make it eligible for all Nebraskans, and I think that would, um, it really speaks to the family values that we as Nebraskans are all about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's something that's cool about this policy as written in the ballot initiative is that it doesn't just cover the employee. It covers when their kids are sick or when their, their parents, their other family is sick too. That's not the case everywhere, but that was really important to us. Absolutely, sure yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad that that's in there. That's really cool. Um, can you tell me about, so companies or organizations that do have good paid mm -hmm. sick leave policies, um, what if some of those paid sick leaves policies are higher than the mm -hmm. seven days provided with this one? Yeah, so this policy just sets the floor. So if other companies are offering more generous policies, those policies aren't affected. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Okay, so we've been saying the words ballot initiative, ballot yes. initiative. <laughs> Can you say a little bit about what a ballot initiative is mm -hmm. and then talk about where you are in that process with paid sick leave? Sure. Yeah, so the ballot initiative, I think, is a really cool thing, especially in Nebraska. We have a unicameral, so we only have one house. Uh, the ballot initiative process is like the second house. The people are the second house. It's a second way of getting laws passed um, in our state. Um, essentially what it is in its most basic form is collecting a bunch of signatures from across the state saying enough people support a certain issue to put the issue on a ballot for voters to decide on. So it's really direct democracy. It's like people vote in the ballot box on a specific issue and say, yes, I support it or no, I don't. Um, and it's cool because it's a way to focus on the issues, not the party mm -hmm. and, and really get things done that otherwise might not get done in the state. Um, and I don't know if you want to add anything before I talk about where we're at in the process, but. Um, I just want to say from a volunteer standpoint mm -hmm. um, that the ballot initiative um, is a really great way to connect with fellow Nebraskans mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you were asking about that question of how did this paid sick leave like come about, mm -hmm. it really comes from that direct contact yeah. with those um, with other Nebraskans of like, what is it that um, you need help with? Yeah. How can we make the good life that we have mm -hmm. here in Nebraska, how can we make that better for you? Mm -hmm. How can we really make sure that we achieve that good life for all Nebraskans, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. I think that um, to me is absolutely powerful of like hearing straight from fellow Nebraskans. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Um, and so the where we are in the process is this is to get the issue on the ballot in November of 2024. Okay. So next November. Um, and to do that, we have to collect about 90,000 signatures and you have to also qualify a certain number of counties across the state. Um, and so basically to do that, you have to get signatures from 5% of registered voters in 38 of the Nebraska counties. Wow. So okay. there's like a, a high number requirement and then there's also this county requirement. Okay. And so that's something that our coalition has been working on the past couple of months and will continue to work on over the next year. Um, so we're in that signature collection phase right yeah. now. And that takes a ton of like volunteer power, coalition power. It takes a ton of coordination, um, but we're always, always, always looking for people to help us collect signatures. And that's at events. That's like as simple as taking a petition to like your book club and saying, hey, three friends, will you sign this? Mm -hmm. um, all of those things really, really, really add up. It doesn't, it feels like a drop in the bucket sometimes, mm -hmm. but it is not. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're in that phase in the get all the signatures you can from people, education, like having those conversations, like Cindy said, about the issue so that people know more about it. Um, we're in that phase. And then the signatures aren't due. They're like due to the Secretary of State about four months or exactly four months before the general election. So that'll be like early July okay. um, of this year. Okay. And I do want to add that mm -hmm. um, volunteering um, to get these signatures is really, I know that people feel like, oh, it's getting a lot of pressure, like mm -hmm. to ask people for their signature, but really it's very rewarding to talk to Nebraskans. It's low stakes, low risk. You do, like Kate said, you can take it to your book club and get three mm -hmm. people to sign. And that's mm -hmm. three people that we didn't have before. And that's 
even though it feels like a drop in the bucket, it really isn't. It makes a difference, especially in those counties that are less populated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, here in Omaha, we're lucky that we have a lot of people. Yeah. But we have those counties in western Nebraska mm -hmm. that are not as populated. Um, so it's great to even be, have just community members that mm -hmm. can take it to their book club, take it to the PTA meeting, and just collect signatures. Yes. Even as simple as that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So July of 2024 is one yes. of those would be due, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, but I had to do my calendar math. Yeah, right. yes, 2024. <laughs> and then this policy wouldn't go into effect until October 1st of 2025. Okay. And part of the reason for that is we really consulted with small businesses when we were developing the policy. Good. Like up until like days before finalizing the language, we were having conversations with mm -hmm. businesses. Um, and we felt like that almost a year long implementation timeline, which is on the later end of implementation dates of other states who have passed legislation like this, um, kind of hits a compromise between letting small businesses like have time to implement the changes and things like that on the one hand, and then on the other hand, um, recognizes that this is like a very important issue that will affect a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to also get it into effect, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Cindy, as a volunteer, are you mostly collecting signatures or what other kinds of things are you doing? Um, it's a lot of collecting signatures, yeah. Well, which I will be honest, like I take it to people that I know. I yeah. don't necessarily, I once in a while do go out and do like the group ones, mm -hmm. but because of my time schedule, I will totally. do the most. But I know that there's plenty of volunteers that go out mm -hmm. into those community events. Um, but like I said, mentioned earlier, like um, Nebraska Appleseed, like I've learned so much about policy, about our state. So even having those opportunities like today mm -hmm. to come and talk to, mm -hmm. you know, um, an audience about um, this important initiative, um, those are opportunities that I've gotten as a volunteer. Nice. Have either of you heard from folks that you're talking to, people you know, like stories that have really impacted you about why paid sick leave is so important for Nebraskans? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I I am <laughs> lucky that I've gotten uh -huh. to I, I get to talk to a lot of different Nebraskans in the job that I have, mm -hmm. the jobs that I've had mm -hmm. in the past. I'm a people person. I love people. So <laughs> that also helps too. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the things that always impacts me the most when I think about how paid sick leave affects us is mm -hmm. when I um think about parents and their children being sick. Because that's really something that you can't control. You can't control if your kid gets sick, right? And as a parent, you want to make sure that they're healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've definitely heard and have have heard of situation where parents have had to, they're trying to figure out where can their child go um, during the school day, during the work day, mm -hmm. um, because they have to go to work, but obviously their kid can't be at school because they're sick. So they're trying to figure out where can I leave my child at? And there are moments where maybe these parents are having to make the choice of leaving their child in a place where maybe they aren't 100% comfortable mm -hmm. leaving their child with. Maybe it's that neighbor across the hall of your apartment that you see walking down the hallway, um, but you have no other choice um, but to leave your child with them and say, hey, mm -hmm. can you watch my kid for a couple of hours while I go to work? Um, so those are things that maybe we don't think about in general every day, but they are right. happening. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and like, again, I just want to bring up that family values thing that we often talk about here in Nebraska. Yeah. Um, that's important, I think, to all Nebraskans. I, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a theme um, in our state of those family values, right? And it's like, are we really about family values if we're putting parents in a position where they're not 100% sure where to leave their child at because they're having to choose between their child's health or their work. Yeah, that's such a good point. You're totally right. Like Nebraska is a very family values driven state. Um, so it seems like something that would be a really, really good fit. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. So we know that paid sick leave is good for employees. Can you talk a little bit about why it's good for employers as well? Yeah, so a few reasons. I think kind of the most basic is it is not good when people come to work sick mm -hmm. or even distracted. Like if you have a sick kid at home that you feel like you should be with. Um, we have one uh, advocate that we've worked with whose child was hospitalized 
and they didn't have paid sick leave and they had to choose between being by their kid's side in the hospital or going to work and getting a paycheck, um, knowing that if they went to the hospital, they might get fired or just lose out on like money that they used to pay their rent. Um, so having employees at work who are either sick or just like distracted by things like that is not good anyway for productivity. Mm -hmm. It's not good for morale. It's mm -hmm. not good to spread, like Cindy said earlier, to spread sickness. Mm -hmm. um, and the other piece of it is we're a state with like a really low unemployment rate. And so mm -hmm. we hear all the time from employers about having issues like finding employees, finding people to work. This policy would make it so that like employees aren't in a position where they either have to quit their job to stay home or like get fired and it, it helps with employee retention. Um, so those are like the two big pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any data that you can share with us about um, about like uh, paid sick leave mm -hmm. and about um, maybe you know something about like what industries are most impacted by I it? I do. Yeah. I brought this actually, which is what this is about. So um, first of all, in terms of like who currently does not have paid sick leave in the state, for full-time employees, 35.5% of full-time employees in Nebraska have no paid sick leave. Wow. And this is from a survey, the Nebraska Benefits Report, which is like a statewide survey. I don't know which department conducts it, maybe the Department of Labor, but I'm not positive. Um, so yeah, over one third of full-time workers do not have paid sick leave in Nebraska currently. And for part-time employees, it's almost 90%, 86% don't have any paid sick leave. Wow. Um, and then as far as industries, um, like in food service, which I know I mentioned earlier, over half of full-time employees, 56% don't have paid sick leave. So the people who are like making and serving our food, if they're working full-time, over half of those folks don't have paid sick leave. If you're part-time, it's 87%. Um, educational services, which may include like daycares, things like that. It's again, over half of full-time workers, 54% don't have paid sick leave, uh, three-fourths of part-time workers. Um, other industries that are especially impacted are construction, manufacturing, uh, retail, transportation. Wow. Yeah. These are all jobs that directly affect other people, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You totally know, you like... think about the food service. It's somebody preparing your food mm -hmm. or bringing your food to you Yeah. who's sick. Yeah. You think about construction, mm -hmm. you know, it's a dangerous job. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling 100%, are you really being 100% safe mm -hmm. in your construction job? Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, like as, as I said, it's really a initiative that affects all Nebraskans. Mm -hmm. It does not matter your age, your so gender. Yeah. Or if you personally have paid sick, you're still affected by folks who don't. So Exactly, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we just have a couple minutes left. So with that, I wanted to ask, and we've talked a little bit about mm -hmm. it, but like what can our viewers, um, what can we do to help help you all out with this initiative? Number one is help collect signatures. Um, reach out to us if you're interested in that. Like I said, it can be super simple, doesn't have to be difficult, um, and we will train you. Um, another is to help, um, like if this gets on the ballot, we'll have to do a lot of voter education. Mm -hmm. um, and so helping with some of that work is great. Um, if you're interested in getting involved, and aren't sure if either of those are for you, we can always talk with you more um, and see if there's something that's a good fit. We could use people with like interests and skills that vary, so. And absolutely, I mean, I know you mentioned the col collecting signatures, mm -hmm. but there's lots of opportunities to volunteer that's not just directly mm -hmm. collecting signatures. So if it's, you know, maybe you're not a people person like I am. <laughs> so maybe you can help with making a video or posting something online. Um, mm -hmm. Even those simple things just to make people aware um, that this is happening in Nebraska and why we need the, um, these types of initiatives, like paid sick leave, I think that um, mm -hmm. is a lot, has a lot of power in itself. Totally. I might add just one more quick plug. Yeah. If you're impacted by this right now and don't have paid sick leave, we would love to hear from you. Um, the more we hear voices of people that are impacted by this, the more powerful the message. So mm -hmm. Stories are so important yes. when you hear them directly from folks. Um, and my last thing I wanted to ask too was, I know we've touched on this as well, but really reiterate here, why is paid sick leave right for Nebraska? Again, I'm going to hit on those family values. Mm -hmm. um, I often hear family values, which is one of the reasons why I love Nebraska. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's so important. And I think it doesn't really matter what walk of life you come from. Family is important to all of us. 
right? And so for me, um, that's why paid sick leave is extremely important because I think it hits on those family values. Yeah, and it can, I mean, I know we've talked a lot about that, like if your kid gets sick, but paid sick leave is also for your spouse or for your totally. like yep. parents who are aging, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's clear that it will, I mean, like we've talked about, it's beneficial for everybody, for their families, mm -hmm. for, for people the community that, as a whole. Yeah. Even if you don't have a family and you're single, mm -hmm. I don't think you want um, your food to come from somebody who has the flu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no one should have to choose between a paycheck and being with a loved one are taking care of themselves when they're sick and that's like what it comes down to so yeah yeah anything else you'd like to share with us today i don't think so <laughs> I don't think so either thank you so much for having yeah, us absolutely. yes thank you for speaking with us and joining our program kate and cindy for the league of women voters of greater omaha i'm kat henning reminding you to inform yourself about issues and candidates and be ready to go vote omaha